When you create a new Android project, it automatically includes a theme based on the material design. But what if you need to create a custom theme? What if you can't fit your design system into the auto-generated one? In this video, we are going to learn how to create a completely custom theme from scratch. I will introduce my own design system first by creating a new file. Let's name it App Design System. Inside my design system, I want to cover four aspects. Colors typography, shape, and sizes. You can think of the design system as an interface that defines how the theme will look like, what are the different properties that it's going to have. That way we can tune the theme according to the needs of the project. Let's start off with the colors. We can define the colors of the design system by introducing a new data class. In there, we have to define the colors that our theme is going to support. A common practice that is also used in the material design system is to use contrasting colors. For the sake of this example, let's define a few. Be careful with the imports. The color type has to be coming from the Compose package. Note that here we are only defining the colors that our design system is going to support. Think of these definitions as an interface and then we are going to create a concrete implementation a little bit later. These three pairs of contrasting colors are going to be enough for the sake of this tutorial. On your side, you will have to define all the colors that are defined in your design system. Similarly to the color scheme, let's define the typography. Again, we are going to use a data class and let's name it app typography. In there, we need to define all the different text styles that we want to be supported inside our theme. Let's define two styles for titles, large and normal. A body text style that will be used the most. And then let's also define a few text styles for labels, large, normal and small. In here, mind the import of the text style type. It has to be the one coming from the Compose package. Moving on, let's define the shapes. We follow the same approach, create a data class named app shape. And inside it, let's define two shapes one for the containers and one for the buttons. The shape type should also be the one coming from the Compose package. Finally, I'll define the sizes. The name of the data class will be app size. And when it comes to the sizes, I'll define four properties inside. Large, medium, normal and small. The types of the sizes is going to be DPs, which is a type that probably exists only in the Compose SDK. At this point, we have defined our design system. What's next? Next, we have to provide a way to pass the properties of our design system into the composition. To do so, we have to create composition local keys. In the case of the color scheme, for example, we can define a key by creating a new value. Let's call it local app color scheme. We need to assign an instance of the app color scheme class and we need to wrap it in a static composition local of function call. We use this function because that way the key we are creating is not tracked by the composer. That makes it more efficient but also more dangerous because a possible change in a property will cause the entire composition to recompose. That's why it is important to use it for things that are very unlikely to change over time. When it comes to the properties inside the app color scheme class, we can assign them to a default value, which in the case of the colors will be unspecified. Now we should do the same for the other items in the design system. For the typography, we are going to create an instance of the app typography class and for its properties, we are going to assign the default text style. For the shapes, we are going to create an instance of the app shape class and for its properties, we are going to assign a rectangle as a default shape. Finally, for the sizes, we are going to create an instance of the app size class and for its properties, we are going to assign unspecified as default. We are done with the design system. Next, we can create an implementation of it, which is going to be our theme. But before we do so, let's imagine we need to also support custom fonts. I've already included a few fonts in the fonts folder in the resources and let's see how we can use them. I'll create a new file and I'm gonna call it app font. In there I'll define a font family where I will use the fonts from the resources. The font family is essentially a list of fonts. Now that we have the fonts, we are ready to create the theme. Let's do it. I'll create a new file and name it app theme. Inside here, we have to make an implementation of the design system. Again, we are going to start off with the colors. And since we want to support light and dark mode, 
Let's define dark and light color schemes. I'll use the colors that were created with the project itself as they are going to be sufficient for this tutorial. The only thing that I'm going to pay attention to is the contrast between the colors inside A mode, for example, the primary and non-primary are contrasting, and between the modes as well. For example, the dark background is black and the light background is white. Next, let's create an implementation for the typography. When defining the properties of the typography, we are going to use the font family that we have created when defining the app font. For the sake of this example, I'm also defining the font weight for each of the properties and of course the font size. The list of the things that we can change in the text style is pretty big and I'll leave that for you to explore and find out all the properties it provides. When it comes to the shape, I would like to apply rounded corners for the screen element. In that sense, for the container property, I'll use rounded corner shape with a radius of 12 density points. And for the button, I'll make the edges rounded by 50%. Finally, let's define the sizes. The values we are going to use here are going to be 24 for the large, 16 for the medium, 12 for the normal, and 8 for the small. Now that we have defined the properties and the values of our team, let's wire them up and create a team composable. All we need to do is create a composable function that will take a boolean flag for the dark mode initialized by default with the isSystem in dark theme function available in the compose SDK and the content composable lambda to render the UI. Inside the function, first I'll create a property to assign the color scheme based on the isDark theme argument coming in a function. And then I'll also create a ripple indication property used for indicating interactions with the UI elements. Once I've done that, all I have to do is the wiring by passing all these definitions down the composition using the composition local provider. The local app color scheme will be providing color scheme, local app typography the typography, local app shape the shapes, and the local app size the sizes. We should not forget to also provide indication. And the only mandatory property of the composition local provider, and therefore the most important, the content. That's all. At this moment, we have our completely custom team ready to be used. There is only one aspect that we can do in addition, creating a convenience object that will allow us to easily access the team properties inside the composables. And we'll see shortly why it is important. Let's create an object called app theme. And inside it, let's provide references to the different properties of our team, namely color scheme, typography, shape, and size respectively. Note that the types of these properties are composables, which means we will be able to call them from within composable functions, which is basically the reason we are creating this object to begin with. Now our theme is complete. We can go ahead and replace the usage of the auto-generated theme with our custom theme. Here in the main activity, we'll replace the custom theme theme with the app theme and the background color with the one coming from our theme. This is why it was important to define the convenience object. We can access our theme properties easily inside the composables. While here, let's also replace the theme in the preview. Now we can delete the auto-generated theme altogether. To bring all this a step further, let's create a few custom composables and see how we can use our custom theme's full potential. I'll create a new package and call it composables. And inside it, I'll create a new file called buttons. In here, I'll define two button composables, primary button and a secondary button, that are supposed to be reusable composables that I'll be using inside my app. Let's first define the primary button. I would like to be able to modify some aspects of this composable if I want to. So I'll supply a modifier to it. For the button itself, I'll need a label, as well as onClick callback that will be invoked when clicking on the button. Inside the function, I'll use the button that comes from the Compose SDK itself, and I'll pass the modifier and the onClick callbacks to it directly. When it comes to the colors though, I would like to supply colors coming from my own theme. To do so, I'll use the colors property of the button composable, and I'll use the default button colors function, where I'll only change the container color and the content color. In this case, I'll use the primary and the on primary colors from my theme respectively. Finally, I would like to change the default button shape and apply the shape coming from my theme. For that, I'll use the shape property on the button composable. 
Now that we have the button, we have to render its label. I'll utilize the text composable where I'll pass the label value as text and I'll also apply a style that is coming from my own theme, in this case a large label. Let's create a preview to see how our button looks like. Now let's create a secondary button. I'll first copy the primary button function and rename it. Then, instead of using the button composable, I'll use the outline button. For that reason, I'll change the call to the colors to use the outline button colors function. And I'll also change the outline border by using the color from my own theme. Let's also include the secondary button in the preview and see how it looks like. That's all I got about creating and using custom themes in Jetpack Compose. If you find this video useful, share it with friends and subscribe for more. Bye!